Welcome to my weekly talk number 11th. Today is April 8th, 2020. Today I'm wearing a t-shirt from a community that I was part in Brazil. And it says, that's in Portuguese, it's necessary to unite ourselves with others so we can unite ourselves with God. What I want to say to you guys is the importance of thinking about others besides ourselves in a moment of crisis and how we can do that. I also want to explain to you guys the difference between a tribe mentality versus a cult mentality in martial arts. We have been closed for the last three weeks because of this whole pandemic. We fall in the CDC guideline and the state guidelines. And I bet that even if you're not one of my students, you have been going through the same thing. I'm not considered as an essential worker. So I've been working from home, trying to provide good material to my students through Google Classroom, YouTube Live Classes, and through our social media platforms. I would like to explain first the difference between cult and tribe and how we can use this tribe mentality in a good positive way, not in a derogative way or negative way to help each other, to be there for each other, and also to help ourselves in a way. A cult mindset mentality in martial arts or school or association or system can be identified by basically three or four aspects that are pretty much common core to a cult-like mentality. Number one, you can identify easily this fierceful leader running the school with iron fists, not leaving any room for communication, any room for debates or brainstorming. Usually they are very good imposing this dominance over their students through this fearful atmosphere and therefore creating a blind loyalty. Most of the times these leaders, they are looking for their own benefit only. They are not really looking to everyone as a community that can help each other and help others outside their circle. Well, a tribe, it's a little bit different. And we can see the derogative meaning of the word words tribe or tribalism, depending where you look at, and depends of, of which philosophy line you take. We're gonna try to keep this in a positive way. We're not trying to say that we are better than anyone, they are real close to anyone. Actually, it's in the contrary. We want to strengthen our relationships within our community so we can help other people. For instance, what we are planning, what we were planning before this whole pandemic was to have a fundraising, and we're still going to have the fundraising to help the kids from an orphanage in Mozambique that have been devastated by a hurricane about a year and a half ago. Our community was putting together a big gathering to celebrate my birthday, doing a fundraising to help this orphanage, to rebuild the orphanage in Mozambique. And we're doing that through a Methodist church in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Again, is an idea. It can show you guys how our community, our little tribe, could help and outreach another community so far away that we don't even know, that we never really had contact. But this shows how a corporation and a tribe, a real, if we go back to native tribes, and I'm not talking about the tribes fighting other tribes, nothing like this. Let's put just inside the context in a positive way. We have a community, the members there for each other, always making sure that they would help each other. Everybody have their role. Everybody contributing to their own little community. But most important is to be able to be there in case somebody needs it. Now, when we organize ourselves in that way, and we, you guys probably noticed, like you are part of this community. When you joined our school, even though you thought you were just a student, even though you thought that we were just a business, all of a sudden you created so many good connections with people. And we can see this in our WhatsApp chat group, like people that don't even ever train with each other because they go to different classes, interacting. They are now being, they getting to know each other through a chat group on a social media platform. And this way we can organize ourselves in these groups that help each other, thus we can help other people. So that's the difference between the tribe. Another thing is, I don't see martial arts as just a sport. I said that many times. And over the years, I even strengthened my mindset when it comes to self-defense as a whole. It, it, I apply to my whole life when it comes to the major three pillars of self-defense. And this is something that I learned from other people. And I always mention them. One was Carl the Four, and another one was Bill Rapier, former veterans, Navy SEALs, special ops. 
And those three pillars are awareness, preparedness, and willingness. So we can use these three pillars or these three concepts in any way in our lives. When it comes to self-defense, like everyday self-defense, when we are in a parking lot, when we are in some, uh, when we are outside, we're trying to exercise those three aspects, awareness, we, we try to stay aware, we try to look around, preparedness, we do a everyday our work as far as training, staying in shape, and then being ready, and the willingness to act if we need to act. Same thing here, when we look at this pandemic, things we could ask ourselves, and we can help this discussion within our tribe or community. For instance, were you aware that something like this could have happened? And I'm talking about the pandemic. Have you prepared for something like that? I'm not talking about being a doomsday prepper, but how did you prepare for something like this? Did you have anything in stock? And the willingness to work for your own protection, survival, and others, that's the, also the willingness. If we, again, if we look at the meaning of the words tribalism and tribe, because of the whole social construction that we have been seeing nowadays, and because of political ideologies, we've seen that most of the time these words have been deemed as negative words or negative um was a negative mindset. In my opinion, it's not. I think it's important to have a core group of people that we can count on in the moment of crisis. And that's my tribe. My tribe right now includes all my closest friends and my students. And actually not just my closest friends because I consider all my students my closest friends. I know everybody by last name. I need to have strong relationships with those people because if somebody from the, my family needs help and then I cannot help or if nobody can come help me within my family environment here, I would like to count on, on one of my students, on one of my teammates, on one of my closest friends that happens to be most of the time my own students. And I would like you guys to feel the same way about myself and about your own the teammate, other teammates. We cooperate with each other. We work with each other. We ask how everybody's doing, and if anybody's in need of anything, that's a good tribe mentality, to be there for each other in the moment of crisis. Once we take care of each other, and we strengthen our relationships, and we strengthen each individual, we also will be more prepared to help our communities in a more, more broader way. And that's, again, the explanation I gave as far as how, for instance, we have helped um, other people that have gone, that have been gone through some hardships through fundraisings. Um, we can organize events in our gym and we try to get some help. What if somebody needs to move out very quick from the home for whatever reason, for whatever crisis? Who are you going to call? Just call your friends, call your teammates, call your students, call your teachers. So that's why it's so important to be engaged because at the end of the day, in a moment of crisis like we have been going through, a lot of times your help will come from where you expect the least. And probably you are expecting the least to be helped by your friends from your school. And that's a positive way to see tribe or tribalism in very, very, very helpful way and not just fall for different derogative meanings for the words based on social construction and political views. We can build strong arguments saying that, well, Luigi, in the history of the world, we saw many tribal wars. We have to be smart enough. We need to have our minds so open and clear to differentiate everything. Because in most things in life, we can go to extremes left or right, I'm not talking about political views, or north or south. In this case, I'm focusing on the positive side of a tribe that helps each other, that strength each other, that work together, that communicate, that interact, that brainstorm. Once we're so strong individually and in this group, we can help the world. I can give another quick example. We can talk about tap cancer out what John Thomas, one of our teammates, have been doing, how he started this amazing charity to help raise funds for cancer research. And he has been doing amazing things. Everything started in a very small setting. 
John can tell that. And then all of a sudden expanded, expanded. And he reaches to the Brazilian jiu-jitsu community in general. And that's pretty much a huge tribe. It's a big, big tribe of Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioners and grapplers. So another good way to explain that this community sense, and when I use the word tribe sense, it's in a positive, positive way. And I hope you guys understand that the difference between these two. Again, it's necessary to unite ourselves to others so we can unite ourselves with God. Whoever you have as your God, even if you don't believe in anything, you still believe in that. We still need to be there for each other. And that's my message for you today.